Okay, well, as the pandemic continues, so too the questions of COVID-19's origins within the World Health Organization set to restart its investigation into the outbreak. Yes, in a new book and documentary, What Really Happened in Wuhan, journalist and author Shari Markson investigates the potential leak of the virus from the top secret laboratory in China. We're going to speak to her in just a moment. First, here's Shari questioning former US President Donald Trump on what evidence he was presented with. Shari Markson joins us now from Sydney. Hi, hi Shari, hope you're well. Um, Good now, look, morning, I've read Susanna. your book. Good morning, Alistair. Nice to see you. I read your book last night, and there's sort of two things that really, really interested me. One was the kind of chaos around Trump, and I think we saw a little bit of the evidence of that there, and also the fact that he started off saying how wonderful the Chinese were handling it, and then he went to the, the position that he adopted there. But then the other thing that really, really, really struck me was this, this sense of anybody who was even suggesting mm. that there might have been some kind of conspiracy, some kind of cover-up, was kind of just being, not just cancelled, but in some cases disappeared. Now, where did you end up in terms of who to believe and what to believe about the whole story of whether this thing came from the lab? So I've been starting, I've been, I started investigating this around March, April last year, and I've interviewed scientists, uh, whistleblowers from Wuhan, Chinese defectors, intelligence officials, and politicians like the former president and secretary of state to try and unravel and unpick what has happened. Because early last year, we saw that this idea that the virus might have accidentally leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, it was dismissed as a conspiracy theory. And, and like you say, Alistair, anyone who said that they, there was evidence for this, including established credible scientists, were treated despicably. They weren't, their research was blocked from being published in scientific journals. And it's taken almost 21 months for us to unravel and, un and unpick all of this and see what happened is that there was a cover-up not just in the Chinese Communist Party, but there was a cover-up in the West as well, where this has not been properly investigated and it needs to be because we've had 4.7 million people die of COVID-19 so far and the whole world has been turned upside down. Shari, one of the things that you look into is what actually was going on within that Institute for Virology. And there's yes. quite a controversial uh, technique, isn't there, that they're allegedly doing, which is gain of function. Um, there's a Republican senator who calls it juicing up super viruses. Now, this is controversial because um, of who's funding it, but what did you discover about what gain of function is and how it might have contributed to what happened? So gain-of-function research is basically when scientists genetically alter a virus to give it new functions. So it might gain the ability to infect humans or to become, say, airborne when it wasn't able to do that before. So basically what, you've, what you have is the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which houses the world's largest collection of coronaviruses, was creating brand new viruses, even more deadly, that had never existed in nature before. And they were also genetically altering other coronaviruses. In fact, I, and I did an analysis with my research team for the book of all of their scientific papers, and we discovered that there were 60 that were funded with American research, and, and, and that's there in black and white. This can't be denied. It says at the end, funded with the NIH or other agencies. And that's where Anthony Fauci comes into this, because he his agency was funding the research. He knew personally Peter Daszak, with whom the subgrant was going through. He's a scientist. And yet, when the pandemic broke out, Anthony Fauci was sitting in all of the Oval Office conversations, and I've interviewed pretty much everyone who was in that room, in, in, including the former president, and they all said that Anthony Fauci kept silent. He didn't tell anyone what this Wuhan lab was doing. People had to figure it out for themselves. I know we have, we have to say, Sherry, that uh, Dr Fauci has denied some of the allegations in the book. We'll just have to put that out there. Let's not get in, into that any deeper. I just want to ask you, you you're clear that if it did come from the lab, and, and I think you're honest enough to admit that it's not, there's no decisive yes or no to that, no. but that if it did, it was accidental rather than any deliberate mm. plot by the Chinese. Yes. 
that's what it looks like. And as you say, we do not know the definitive answer on this. And, and it is possible this was a natural virus. But as I investigated this very closely, very carefully, and, and this is a 400-page book with, with a lot of evidence, but hopefully, Alistair, you found it readable enough. I did. But what I was able to... <laughs> what I was able to find is that there was no evidence that this virus arose naturally, and yet I was able to find a lot of evidence that an incident had occurred at the Wuhan Institute of Virology in the time frame of initially mid-September 2019, or at least that's when they became aware that something had happened, mm. and then it, it, it rolled on through October, and by November, the virus had spread throughout Wuhan. What A lot of suspicious Sherry, what activity. Has happened, what has happened to the people who you list who did try to raise yes. concerns and who did go public, and yep. we've heard nothing of them since? And this is the most tragic thing, and, it, and it's heartbreaking that the West has just moved on from this. You had brave journalists, activists, mm. doctors, scientists and other whistleblowers who really tried to sound the alarm both over the, the existence of a new coronavirus in Wuhan and also over the fact that this might have come from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. They were either detained and returned, but some of them have never been seen again, literally disappeared. And this is common practice with the Chinese Communist Party. People do disappear. As, as one official I interviewed called it the People's Republic of Disappearances. But the fact that, you know, we, we've all forgotten this, we've moved on from this, and, mm -hmm. and these people effectively gave up their life to try and warn the rest of the world that there was a virus, and you then had the World Health Organization f throughout the first few months of the pandemic Firstly, denying that there was any human-to-human -human transmission, s objecting to the travel bans, telling Europe that there was no need for travel bans. Of course there was a need for a travel ban from China. And you even had Dr Tedros, who's the Director General, in March 2020 saying COVID-19 wasn't as infectious as the flu. I mean, this is the most infectious virus we've seen in our lifetimes. Uh, the, just like to say the World Health Organization... Night, World Health Organization <laughs> has... Um, say... That they, that they didn't say that it was not transmitted from person to person. And again, Dr Fauci denies that there was gain-of-function research. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, people are concerned that there's a lot of misinformation around this. Uh, people don't know yeah. who to trust. The World Health Organization did an investigation, said it was extremely unlikely that this started in the Wuhan lab. They're now reassembling a group of scientists to reinvestigate. I mean, people will be forgiven for really not knowing who to believe. Um, Shari Markson, we appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Susanna. Thanks, yeah. Alistair. Thank you, Shari. It's a tricky one, isn't it? It yes, is tricky. Course, you know, lots of people dismissed that theory early on because it was President Trump. Well, that's a big who point. That's it. a big point that she makes in the book. In the book, and and to be honest, I felt that going through it. Every time Trump spoke, I thought, well, I don't want to believe that guy, and I don't believe that guy. And then she sort of produces things. It's it's, it's it is an interesting read. It, it kind of made me rethink a few things that I'd. But we don't know.